Hold on, I uh, found this text document I want to share with you. It's not really easy to see. Uh, l let me just uh, zoom it in. Why is point four font so small? Okay, there. Now you can see. Why is it that whenever you zoom in on text in a screenshot, it has those weird color halos around it? No, it's not chromatic aberration. The image filters on text could be nice. Hashtag no filter. But in actuality, why do we do that to text? The answer is rather simple. Resolution. Even with our uber high resolution displays we have today, we can still identify pixel edges on an image. One way to combat this is known as anti-aliasing. With that approach, you take samples of the image with a higher resolution than will be displayed, and once you scale down the image to fit, the pixels will have the average color from however large the group was when you first rendered it. This works rather well for text and vector graphics, like this line, since it replaces the squared off pixelated edges of shapes with smoother color transitions. While this explains why text can appear blurry in close-up, since the smoothing effect from blending pixels doesn't work as well up close, it still doesn't explain the color. The color actually comes, at least on Windows machines, from something known as clear type. What clear type does is similar to anti-aliasing in that it renders items at resolutions higher than the display would allow, known as subpixel rendering since the size of the pixels in the rendered image is smaller than a screen pixel. If you look at pixels up close on most displays, you'll see three color elements, red, green, and blue. Typically, each pixel is made up of three vertical bars for each color. ClearType takes advantage of this to emulate a resolution three times greater horizontally than the display would allow. By only controlling parts of each pixel, the three elements act more like three small separate pixels themselves. You wouldn't notice this very much from far away, especially since the are small enough that they can blend together with low contrast between them, but once you spread the pixel-wide error across more than one pixel by zooming in, the colored fringe becomes a little more apparent. The opposite of this technique is known as dithering. While anti-aliasing and clear type sacrifice more colors on the screen, known as color depth, for better resolution, dithering sacrifices higher resolution for more colors. It isn't as commonly used now since most displays can handle 24-bit color, considered to be enough to surpass what the human eye can distinguish. But on earlier machines, where you could count the number of colors allowed on the screen each frame, on two hands or less, it was a pretty useful trick. It worked by putting similarly colored pixels together in a tileable pattern that when viewed from a distance would appear to make the pixels blend into a new color. The original Macintosh, for example, had a monochrome display that could only display black and white. But thanks to its rather high resolution for the time, it was able to emulate a more elaborate grayscale, or in the case of other machines, a larger color palette. It's funny to think that while at one point more colors were important to computer graphics, the opposite is true today, to the point where instead of using resolution for more colors, we're using more colors to emulate higher resolution. And thanks to that, text now looks just a bit smoother. <laughs>